welcome to Series 6 of Property Elevator, the show where we give budding property developers the chance to pitch their deals to our six seasoned property professionals. These are John Howard, Ranjan Bhattacharya, Paul Mahoney, Nicholas Woolwork, Hayley Andrews and Scott Marshall, or who we call our property investment angels. Now, we all know property is not a game for the faint-hearted. With hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake, yes, the rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very wrong very quickly. Hi, I'm Scott Marshall, Founder and Managing Director of Roma Finance, one of the UK's leading specialist finance non-bank lenders. In my career, I've done almost 20,000 transactions, and as Roma Finance, we've done um, two and a half thousand transactions for almost 500 million pounds worth of property deals. I'm here because I love to lend, but I do think that people to come, come into the room, they should have a level of understanding and knowledge to be able to pitch successfully. Hi, I'm Paul Mahoney. I'm the founder and chairman of the UK's leading property investment advisory company, Nova Financial Group. I'm also an experienced property investor and developer. If this goes pear-shaped, there won't be any equity left. Hi, I'm Nicholas Woolwork, investor, developer and co-founder of wealthlabs.co.uk, one of the UK's leading wealth creation and property training companies. The point of this yeah, show though is so we can educate people and back the people we think have got what it takes. My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I'm an investor and developer for the last 30 years. I specialise in converting defunct commercial buildings to residential use. I'm the founder of Succeed in Property, the UK's leading training course provider for commercial property investors and developers. Listen, it's a great pack. I like some of the detail you put in your numbers, by the way. There are certain numbers here that uh, I don't think anyone else has uh, really covered. Hi, I'm Hayley Andrews. I'm the co-founder of Your Freedom Empire, a business and property training organisation. I've been in the industry for 20 years. I'm a developer and property entrepreneur. I think you've missed quite a lot out of your numbers, especially on the operational side of it. I'm going to make you two offers. You only get one. Hello, I'm John Howard and I've been a property developer and investor for over 40 years. During that time I bought and sold over 4,000 properties in 84 different locations across the UK. That makes me the most experienced and most successful angel of them all. Although I wasn't in the studio, you will be hearing from me after each pitch. Enjoy the show. Manny, Anna, welcome to Property Elevator. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so tell me then, uh, where have you come from firstly today? I came from Southwest London, so not far away. Slough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. And tell me then, um, do you work together a lot or is this a new venture for you both? We do collaborate, but that would be uh, our first joint venture project, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've done loads of potential, potential collaborations, yes. yeah. but hopefully if this one goes through our first, you know, live project. Really exciting. So tell me then a little bit about the deal that you've brought for our angels. Great. It's an uh, ex NatWest bank building. It's been vacant since January 2023. It's the whole classic uh, permitted development, um, Class MA. Uh, we think it has a potential for three flats. Uh, on the first and the second floor, and ground floor, uh, 2,000 square feet of retail space. Uh, hopefully, a local independent business would, you know, would go for it. So it's in like main high street, Henley. Very nice. And is there anyone in particular that you would like to partner with on this project? I think we're open. Yeah, we are definitely quite open, open to yeah. all the angels. Actually, we'd love yes. to, yeah, work with any of them, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> right then, we have Manny and Anna. Uh, coming to see us now. Uh, they have to have one of the best packs we've seen on the show. Um, they've got a former NatWest building down in Henley-on-Thames. I have to say I've been past this building a few times and I know it's a very, very handsome building. They're looking for £1 million of investment from us. Um, they want a 60-40 split in their favour, uh, hmm. interestingly enough. Um, shall, we, shall we have them in? Yeah, let's check it out. Let's hope the deal's as good let's as the see pack. what they've got to say.
So hi, my name is Manny Chopra and I am a award-winning property investor and developer. Along with my husband and business partner, Romy, we have successfully completed over 25 uh, property projects in the London and the Southeast area, starting from HMO conversions to ground ups and now more recently commercial to residential conversions. Uh, the deal that we're bringing to you is an ex NatWest bank building and it's in the affluent and very desirable area of Henley-on-Thames in South Oxfordshire. So very high price per square foot values of 605 pounds. Um, and uh, just before I go into numbers, I wanted to just briefly mention about 200 meters from this particular deal. We've just bought an ex Lloyd's bank building uh, for 800,000 pounds. We have secured permitted development rights on those for three flats. Uh, and we're currently in the middle of construction. Uh, so we know the area well, we know the town well, we know the values really well. Uh, and just very quickly, an overview on the numbers. Purchase price is £750,000. Uh, conversion costs, uh, including warranties and utilities and project management, is £380,000. Uh, total costs, including stamp and all the other uh, legal fees and what have you, is £1.2 million. GDV, £1.9 million and we are offering you a 28% return on your investment. That's 280,000 pounds. Over to you, Anna. Thank you. I'm Anna. I came to the UK 10 years ago. I started my architectural and interior design company. Since then, we completed more than 60 projects, both residential and commercial, covering more or less uh, all the stages from feasibility assessment, planning, um, construction drawings, project coordination, interior design, basically up to, you know, turnkey solution. Um, regarding this particular project, this is a beautiful building uh, which tick all the boxes of planning uh, of permitted development class MA. It's a class E and it's been in class E for more than two years. It's been vacant from January this year. So in a month it's going to be vacant for more than three months. Um, it is in the conservation area, but as we know, it does not stop us from using PD because we are not changing the ground floor. Ground floor will stay as it is commercial. Next door is the new uh, organic, Planet Organic, Planet organic uh, which pays actually 100k for more or less similar uh, space. So our estimation is much, much more conservative. So we put only 60k for the, for the ground floor rent. So as you see, I think it's going to be, uh, we both think it's going to be a lovely development up. We forgot that there is a, there is a rare access to this building. Uh, it has a right of way. So delivery, building materials, uh, they're all going to be, you know, sorted. Because the area, this area in front of the building is actually a pedestrian area. So it's lovely for the alfresco dining. Uh, and also to mention, there are loads of uh, different markets that happen literally just right outside. So there's a lot of footfall. Uh, I mean, we've been there weekdays, weekends, it's yeah. always very busy. So yeah, quite excited so, yeah. about this deal actually. Now we are open for questions. Fire away. Fire away. <laughs> great pitch, great pack, great property, clearly great people. Um, but I've got a question, which yeah. is obviously, Manny, you're in business with your husband, having done 25 other projects before. Um, is this the first time the two of you have collaborated on a project? We, that's going to be our first JV project, that's okay. true. But we did collaborate for last, what, how many years we know each other? For At least three, a couple, yes. two and a half, yeah. Two, two or Anna, three you, years. Anna, are you putting effectively your sweat equity into this? No, we are or you're contributing we're, we're cash as well? We're putting equity, uh, cash equity, half, half as well. Over and above your investment, I think. Yeah. So, so your investment, uh, we're seeking 1 million. Yes. 1.2 million is the overall cost. We'll be yeah. putting in 100 grand each. 100 grand each. Okay, so it's... Okay, split yeah. it's like a fair equity yeah. split and i think it's you know we're going in together because i think it's fun doing something together and sharing is caring <laughs> <laughs> it's better to have 50 percent of something than 100 percent of nothing yeah. so uh, that's just our sort of strategy on this one i agree with scott you know you guys are obviously very investable great pack great building however obviously this building wasn't built for residential it was built for a bank yeah. Um, and there's, that presents sometimes some challenges. Sure. It seems maybe the ground floor isn't necessarily laid out for retail or maybe a restaurant or something. But, you know, for example, just looking at the picture next door looks much more modern, glass frontage, all the rest. Yes. Um, 
also, you know, for example, one of the flats are relatively small and a bit strangely shaped. How are you going to sort of under, overcome those challenges? I think someone like uh, a maybe a M&S Express, because we were looking, doing a bit of homework. There is obviously a massive waitrose just behind this. In fact, the access from the back is through the actual waitrose um, building. Park, so yeah. there is a waitrose, there's a Tesco, there is a Sainsbury Express, but there isn't an M&S from what I know. In terms of uppers, we don't see much challenges. So first of all, we kind of we plant all these flats uh, kind of around the existing toilet facilities, around existing you know, wastage facilities. So we should be fine with that. I do appreciate that that building was not built yes, you know, for, for flats, but that building was not built for, 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 for a bank either. So what is the exit of the, the ex Sell the flats. Yep. Sell the flats so we can pay you back the money and uh, refinance the commercial, so 50% loan to value. We've been quite conservative with that. Mm -hmm. That would then pay you, uh, that, uh, selling the flats plus 50% of that would pay you guys back your capital yeah. plus interest or your profit share. And then it would leave us with the commercial space and the rental income from that. Have you, have you done a, new, a noise survey? You've said it's a pass on the, the planning here. Uh, why have you said it's a pass? Have you done the surveys yet? I okay, assume so not. We haven't done a noise survey yet. No, we haven't reached that so why stage. Why have you put yet. pass on there? Because there is no noisy uh, business around. So there is no industrial. There is no even you know, light industrial. Well, there's a market right outside the front door. It's not. It's not everyday week. market. No, no, and no, it's, no, no. it's not a market. Yeah, limited. Okay. I think okay. up to like Fine. the afternoons only. It's once okay. a week. It's once a week here yeah, during daytime. Just to make make sure you thought about that because there's obviously yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, being yeah. such a high street location with shops all around at the rear. A market at the sure. front. It's going to be quite mm -hmm. a noisy environment, I think. The good thing about this that it's actually a pedestrian area in front of the building. Okay, yeah. So, so that's, that's no that's actually noise then. So it sort of counters yeah. out. So bit. all the services are from behind. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. it's a pretty low risk, but I just wanted to see. It really, lends itself beautifully to, to you know outside dining, our fresco dining. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can get like for, for, it, yeah. for a very fancy restaurant, yeah. I think it's just in a perfect location yeah. because the next door, that's one. This, this is the existing restaurant. It's a really, really nice place. Yeah. Can I just quickly drill down into the bill costs? Um, you've got sort of 380,000 for the bill costs. Um, the total size of the building is about 4,000 square foot. And the, about 2,000 of that is attributed to the ground floor retail element. That's correct. What sort of, are you doing any fit out of that at all? Are you going to take it back to Shell? Strip out. Yeah. yeah. So you said 25 grand, I think, for the yes, strip yeah. out. Okay. Um, and kitchenette, toilet, the basic Shell and core. Okay, and just make sure the electrics work, ready for yeah, someone to yeah. come in. Okay, so the majority of that's on the uppers. So then you're yeah, you're at about what? 150 pounds per square 150, foot. 150, that works out to does it? Okay, great. Yeah, that's not unreasonable plus, for a yeah, small Plus 10% plus 10% contingency, plus 10% professional yeah. fee, plus 10% uh, project uh, management. Utilities. Plus additional utilities. And yeah. warranties. Yeah. Are you project okay. managing it yourself? Yeah. Yeah, it they're gonna, yeah, they're going to be Romy and me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's the time scale for the project from start to finish, do you think? I'd say uh, once we purchase it, uh, let's say we need three months to get the PD, although it's 56 days, but you need time to prepare for it in advance, the yeah, drawings and what have you. Uh, six months to actually do the conversion and then another three months for re uh, selling it, refinancing it. I'd say 12 months, really. I, I think the, the rentability of the shop is very, very good. Um, but you want to exit out of this through sale of the flats. And by the time this is done, um, you know, who knows what the selling market's going to be, even in a place like Henley. And we could be in for several months or whatever with, with these things on the market. What have you done in terms of research on the saleability of those flats as exit? And alternatively, if you had to go down the rental route. I think so, serviced accommodation is one of your exits, isn't it? Yeah, so that's yeah. a potential exit. Now, we've spoken to a few agents in terms of the saleability, and what they've said is because Henley is an affluent area, but it's also it's an ageing population, so, the, you know, it's like 60 plus and what have you. So and for, they perfect are, for Ranjan. <laughs> I'll tell you in 20 years. Could, could you do an assisted living block for Ranjan? <laughs> I'll tell you in 40 years. <laughs> you haven't secured the site yet. You're still in the process of acquiring it. You come up with a very specific acquisition cost, £791,000. So is that the asking price? How do no, you get to that no. figure? Asking price is 725000 but we put in a little bit of a buffer just because we feel that we may have to go up a little bit on the price. Short so we've said 750, plus all the other bits, I think, are yeah. the stamp duty, the professional fees, legals. I think we put 10,000 for legals. Yeah. Um, 
I think that all adds up to It's a lot of property for 750 grams yes. in, in, in Henley. <laughs> Do you think it's it might go for it's more? Because it's, it doesn't take, you know, a big imagination to convert this, right? Yeah. And therefore, there probably is going to be quite a bit of competition for is it. Is it a competitive bidding process? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> PD is up my street. I, uh, I, I've been past this building. Um, I think you guys are great and all of that. Um, the thing is, though, you're wanting a lot of money. And I would do these deals myself, quite frankly. Um, and I certainly wouldn't be putting all the money into the proposal. I'll be getting uh, debt financing. Um, so I'm going to give a sort of semi-offer right now, which is that I know you've got a couple hundred grand. We'd be able to put up some of the remaining equity, but we'd be looking to raise senior debt on the best of the chunk um, and make the deal work that way. So I'll put that out there for now. So what are you offering? You're offering uh, the rest of the equity needed? No, uh, I'm taking a leaf out of your book. I've half given an offer. <laughs> half offer. Thinking <laughs> about it, and then I'll come back to the rest later. So you're not, you're not getting your well, one We need to know then. what your offer is, though, Randy. Well, right? that's a half offer. He's thinking about it. What I've, would John I've make of about this? it? No, half come on, that's not the rules. <laughs> what's your offer? There's no rules. He's made them up. Go on, what's your offer for? <laughs> Well, look, my friend Ranjan doesn't get his wallet out very often. <laughs> so I'd hate to offer you something better and steal his limelight. Uh, and MA is his thing, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to him. I'm not going to do this deal with you today because I'd like to do this on my own or similar deals like this. So I think we're a bit too close to each other to be doing this kind of deal. Um, I think there's better people on the panel today that actually might work out for you because um, I'd probably want a bit more equity being a, you know, an equal developer. I think you need more of a a hands-off partner, someone that is um, maybe lending the money more than actually being an active partner. With my skills, I I'd want to get involved and run it and, and do what you're doing. And I, and I don't think you need that. You said that at the beginning. So probably not okay, the deal for in us. lunch every month as part <laughs> of the oh, yeah, Maybe that's it's a, fancy a Henley. good option. I love Henley. I do love Henley. You know, can we build it over the regatta weekend? 100%. <laughs> right, I'll give you all the money. <laughs> so I'll make an offer, um, but so I'll, I'll fund the deal, but 60-40 in my favour. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to make you two offers. You only get one. I'm going, you, <laughs> I'm going to make you two offers. I'm going to give you all of the money for the 28% return that you're offering. Sorry, the 40% sorry, the return, so the 28% ROI. Okay, so that's offer number one. Offer number two is instead of a million pounds, if another angel wanted to join me, I would offer you 850 grand, but I would be prepared to half the return I'm taking for the 850 grand. Mm. Okay, that's great, yeah. And that return would be? Well, it'd be 20% or 14% ROI. For 850,000? For 850,000. Potentially, there is, you know, and, and I would be really interested to help you on the next stages of both of your journeys, either whether it's working collaboration or whether it Separate is, you know, yeah. going down um, different routes um, separately. And I think that um, a partnership would be good to help us all to do very well working collaboration. That's amazing. Thank you know you what, so Scott? Much. I like this collaboration idea. I was thinking of taking a leaf out of John's book, this series, and not sharing. But I don't know, something, something in the warmth of your voice and the way you presented that made me reconsider. Okay, get a room, guys. <laughs> if you guys are doing the debt, if you're doing the debt, then they've got a couple of hundred. We'll do remaining of the equity and we'll do a collaboration on that basis if you guys can secure it at that level. Okay, let's summarise then. So you've got one offer from Hayley. Yep. She's offering what you wanted with a 60-40 split in her favour. You've got two offers from Scott. One is uh, what you wanted, uh, and the other offer is for myself and Scott to collaborate and give you what you wanted. I guess the disadvantage with that offer is you've got to sub us for two lunches instead of one. So you've got three <laughs> different proposals on the table to choose. Brilliant. Give us, give us a minute yeah. to have a quick chat. Yeah. So guys, we made a decision. We'd love to accept Scott's deal. Hey. So one million pound investment for 280,000 pound profit. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely, Scott. Yeah. 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 Thank Brilliant. you so much. Thank you. 
So ladies, I hear there were a few angels fighting over the deal. Yes! <laughs> we got this! Yeah. Oh, I'm so pleased for you both. Tell me what happened then when you went in. Well, I think it was a daunting a bit to start with. I think I was a bit nervous yeah. Yeah. at the beginning, yeah. But they were really nice, to be fair. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And uh, I think we didn't fumble, which was great. I mean, I, we, we knew our deal, yeah. And, and it was a proper professional discussion. So I, I actually enjoyed it. I really enjoyed yeah. the questions. It was really great. We had three offers. Yeah. Uh, actually, four technically. technically but two four. from <laughs> one and, you know, the other two. Uh, and we just went for Scott, Scott's offer. So we're yeah. really excited. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. And we wish you all the best with the deal and hope it goes so well. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank so Ranjan's wallet goes back in his pocket. Well, I'm yeah. uh, Not the first time. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm wounded actually. I, yeah, I don't too. understand why I was rejected. I'm deeply hurt. Um, I don't know uh, why they didn't for go bringing for the me in on it. But I, I, I'm deeply hurt. I've got nothing to say. I'm just hurt. Well, the, the best yeah. angel won. What can I say? Oh. <laughs> Hi, Cosmin. Welcome to Property Elevator. Hi, Lizzie. Tell me firstly, where have you come from today? Today I'm coming from Basildon, Essex. Great. So tell us then about the deal that you've brought today. Residential property. We're looking to convert it into a HMO. And how much investment are you needing from one of the angels today? We need 95,000. Great. Well, good luck. It was very nice to meet you and I hope I'm going to come back with great news. So we have Cosmin next with a HMO proposition, or as John would say, Bed sets. <laughs> Should we have him in? Old Let's do this. Uh, today I'm uh, have a BRR deal for you. Uh, this is in Basildon. I'm looking for ninety five thousand for you, and on return I'm offering fifty percent share of the company, and a return of the rent around sixty four thousand a year turnover. Talk us through um, what you want from us uh, in terms of uh, investment and uh, that kind of thing. We're looking for 95,000. That is part of 25% of the bridging loan. We're looking to raise uh, the 75 loan to value for this. We're looking uh, to raise the 100% funding costs for the refurb. Where will the 68,000 pounds that you need to spend on the property, where will that money go? What are you doing to the property to create a six bed HMO? We have the dormer that we're going to add. It's going to be a two bed and suite on the loft conversion. We have to add another four and suites on the other rooms. There's few walls that need to be moved and the layouts. We've been there already three times with the builder, with the architect. We looking to spend the money as well on the furniture and all the other refurbishments that we have. We need to do a full rewiring as well. We're looking to put a new boiler. How do we exit from the deal? The exit strategy will be to refinance at the end and to pull almost all the money out based on the GDV uh, um, which is going to be. Then uh, from there, um, we're happy to uh, running as an HMO, me and my partner and uh, to pay you all the money, all the money out. You say you already own the property? So we own a residential that is now uh, consent to let. So there's a mortgage on it, a home loan mortgage? There's a mortgage. Is a... You've got consent to let? Yeah. So in giving you the 95,000, that's the 25% the, the deposit of what it's worth today. Is that right? Yes. Yep. It's 25%. And we would the... need to remortgage out your current lender? Yes. Yeah. So, so would we be doing that with the bridge? So yes, we purchased yep. the property for the bridge and when we refinance, we, 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 we have a new lender that will be happy to give us a new valuation and pull all the money out. And the 95,000, does that come back to us through the remortgage of the property? Yes. But then we still own 50% of it, is that the plan? Yes. So okay. you, you have all your money back, initial investment, you own 50% of the property, the equity on the property, and you own 50% of the rental income. Okay, who wants to start us off? I'll go. Go for it. Well, she's eager. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, thank you for the pitch. It is nerve wracking standing up here in front of this ugly bunch. Uh, what's your GDV? We calculate GDV on four different ways. We Worst case scenario. The worst case scenario will be 475,000. And the 68,000 um, pounds for your refurb, is that to do the convert, the, the 
you're doing a loft conversion yes, as well, aren't you? Yes, that includes the dorma and all the refund for the property. That's quite low. Have you got an actual quote for that? Yeah, if you look on your pack, there's a full quote from the builder. There's four pages all spread it. Uh, does that include a contingency? It does, yeah, 10%. 10%, okay, fantastic. And your GDV, is that based off the revenue? We, we have a GDV based on the square meter. We have a GDV based on the commercial valuation because it's going to be a six bed HMO and suite, all in suite. So we expect a commercial valuation. And um, we have an average a GDV around 510. Okay. Yeah. Cosmin. Yes, please. I presume you're from Romania? Yes, I am, yeah. Chef Ach. Bine. <laughs> Good. Um, the property, you're looking to convert it into an HMO? Yes. Um, is it in an Article 4 directive area? It's not. Basil Don itself is not an Article 4, not yet. So you own the property already? No, we know. We have an offer accepted in December. Ah. We wait for the keys. Ah, so you, have you exchanged on the purchase? We haven't. Okay, when we you haven't. say you're waiting for the keys, I just we, assume that you've exchanged, yeah. waiting for completion. You've not we, yet exchanged. No, no. You've just got a, a, effectively a purchase price agreed at exactly, this stage. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. What's what's your background before property then? What's your So I'm still employed. I'm working with NHS. My partner as well, we both work oh, well, with okay. NHS. Right. For Brilliant. eight well, years in Basildon. We live in Basildon, we work in Basildon, and we're looking to invest in Basildon. And that's Good your you. target audience, the NHS, isn't it? Uh, yes, tenants. so because yeah. uh, we have doctors as well in our property as well, and we have a contract, verbal contract with the campus manager from the hospital that she provides us with tenants. Well, that's a really important point that wasn't in your pack, so I'm glad. Uh, yeah, you, is, you is the reason that. we start this, we start the business around the customer, Brilliant. so we try to, yeah. Excellent, no, really good ethos behind the business, like it, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Is it going to be all bills included in, in the in the rent? So all bills including, uh, we're looking to charge between 890 to 950. Mm -hmm. We'll be done checks now over half a year now on spare room and pretty much see every room is coming and going uh, and suite especially. It's very high demand. There's very few rooms for rent. I'll, I'll put a little bit of details on your pack. Uh, about 30, 40 rooms now for rent in Basildon and suites and double and over 20, over 200 uh, people looking for this type of rooms. Can, can those kind of tenants afford that level of rent? I mean, I appreciate it's an HMO, so it might be one of the cheaper options in the town, but it's, that's a lot of money. Is the rent now about 750, 800 for double room in Basildon, just a normal double really? room. Wow. So an end suite comes a little bit more premium. comfortable for special doctors. And uh, every time we have uh, an interview with doctors, they they never ask about the price, they even try to negotiate. They're very comfortable to pay. Yeah. So <laughs> and how far is the property from the hospital? 10, 15 minutes walk, very close. It's town centre, it's actually two minutes for where I live. Renters are looking to pay about 800 to 850 a room. Yeah. But in here we have about 920 a room. Is the difference there the ensuite? Is mostly the general public tenants that are looking for. The more figures I put, a 920 is for the doctors from the hospital. Okay. Yeah. So this will target at the upper end of the rental Yes. Uh, we've done as well, uh, we provide a, 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 an office on our rooms, we provide TVs as well. We see what the kind of rooms they like and uh, try to be a bit higher end of Are you doing all of that on the 68,000? Does that include the staging of the property, the TV, the furniture, yes, etc.? Yes. It does. It does, wow. yeah. Can I get your builder, please? Because uh, that's <laughs> yeah. really uh, cheap. I'm kind of with Haley on this that that £68,000 um, feels light compared to the amount of work that's needed to, you know, to, to, to go from what is, you know, a, a normal mid terrace property to a, a six bed HMO with dormers in the roof. With the same, uh, we have more cots for other builders before. Initially, we planning to put just a dormer. We have cots for dormer around 25 to 30,000. We have cots for uh, refurbing around 30 to 40,000. Uh, we put it all together now for the same builder and he's, he's happy. This cot has come uh, just a week ago or even earlier than that, because we just decide now we give you all job. We, we want it to be hands-on. Yeah. 
uh, initially we say we wanted to do the dorm uh, just the shell and I wanted to do myself as well. Uh, we have plumbers that we work with, electrician, but this particular builder has got all the team and uh, he is happy to yeah, do it. So within that, that 68,000, there's obviously an element of profit as well for the, for the builder. So you know, had you been doing the work yourself, um, then actually that could have been, the labor could have been effectively free. I mean, just paying for materials, it, it's, it, honestly, yeah. it seems- I definitely seems agree with you. Yeah, I like you. I think you're really, really um, likable. I think you've got a few challenges with this site. Um, and I think the costs are going to creep up. I'm more than happy to mentor people, um, but I don't think there's enough in this to make it worth either or while being in partnership together on this. So, um, you know, wish you all the best of luck and hopefully one much. of the other guys might um, Thank you. chuck you a curveball offer. I'm thinking Scott's got a little trick up his sleeve over there. Let's see. <laughs> Listen to the other angels uh, who obviously have got experience in this space. When you have someone like Haley, who's got an HMO portfolio talking to you about um, the, the refurb costs and you've got um, someone like Nick who's talking to you about the bills and, and, and the actual running costs of, yes. of HMOs and obviously Haley's referred to that as well. I think um, it's important to kind of take that on board and, and, and be a sponge to that kind of information. You've also got a full-time job in the NHS. Yes. Um, both you and your partner got full-time jobs in the NHS. There's clearly a market for this property. We can see that. Um, but I'd probably want you to um, relook at all the numbers. Um, you've also got given you a full-time job. Actually, how do you project manage this, given the fact that the bill costs and refurb costs aren't so low? Um, for that reason, at this moment in time, um, as an investor, this would not be one for me. And I wish you all the best with it. Because Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate your backable. feedback. Yeah, definitely take After all that suspense. <laughs> <laughs> you dangled well, the carrot. Yeah, okay. Um, look, I think the fact that you, it's two minutes from your home and you work nearby and you've got a friend who's going to build it for you, I think the project management, in my opinion, is, is doable um, because you can swing past it twice a day yeah. pretty easily. And my rota is very flexible as well. I'm working one week in, one week off. I'm very flexible. 37 hours a week, yeah, I'm pretty much like a part-time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The ongoing cost is probably is light, obviously. The build cost is probably a bit light as well. But if your friend is willing to build it for that, then it's probably doable as well also. In that Scott touched on, maybe he's just not taking as much profit as he usually would. So, you know, I think if we can get those numbers to stack up with the, uh, something I'm not super familiar with is the planning and the PD side for this type of thing. Um, there doesn't seem to be any cost allocated to that. We are so actually getting the, the planning to build the dormer. Have you looked at what that's going to cost you so far as submitting the plans and getting it done? Yeah, I've paid the architect already. Yeah, 1900. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. You know, on that on that basis, I'd be willing to give you the 95,000 pounds for half of the share of the, the, the development on the basis that 95 comes back to me when we remortgage it. All right, that's great. Yeah. Thank you much for your offer, yeah. Yes, yeah, so 95, I'll give you all the money back. Yep. 50% sharing the equity of the house and 50% yeah. of the rent. And then we can the do rents. more there, thereafter. Yeah. You can share beard grooming tips together. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> great, yeah. Listen, it's a great pack. I like some of the detail you've put in your numbers, by the way. There are certain numbers here that uh, I don't think anyone else has uh, really covered. And I, I do disagree with the other folks. I think your build costs, given your relationship with the guy that's doing it, is absolutely fine. Yeah, we fine. do the flip, yeah. Um, I think my issue is the is the is what we've got at the end and the uh, the cost of running it and the net profit. And um, I don't tend to like um, being involved long term in HMO propositions. Uh, got quite a few of them at the moment and it's not an area that I'm too actively involved in anymore in new ones. So that's the only reason I'm out. I think you've, you've presented some great information here. It's one of the best packs I've seen, I think. Okay, so I don't have any uh, beard grooming tips yet. <laughs> a few years might have. <laughs> um, I, think you're, I think you're really likeable. You're a nice oh, guy. Thank you, highly, yeah. Um, I love HMOs. I think you've missed quite a lot out of your numbers, especially on the operational side of it. I think what's great about this pack and you 
is you've got great friends. I definitely need to upgrade my friends if you can get a six bed done for sixty eight thousand. Well, we don't like hanging around with us. That's yeah. charming, isn't it, Hayley? It's charming. Would I'm you offended. do Would you do me a six bed conversion for sixty eight k though? <laughs> <laughs> if you would, I'll hang around with you all day. Um, so, no, I, I think I don't think that I can beat any of the offers that are already on the table. Can I just thank you? Add something. So, so interestingly, you are looking potentially to do a deal with Paul. Yes. Okay, where Paul puts in the £95,000, okay? Um, I would be prepared to be the bridging, to give you the bridging. So to go in joint with I'll Paul. I'll have to tender that, man. So Cosmin, you have an offer on the table from uh, Paul. Uh, all of the money and uh, he gets it back at the end of the project and uh, is an investor in your company, 50%. You actually got two angels. Yes. To to back for the price you, of one. For the price of one. Yes, I'm definitely agree, and I'm definitely happy to to, to shake hands now on based on these terms. And uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well yeah, thank well you very much. Yeah, so thank you. Looking forward to work with you, and yeah, I think this is going to be a great project. So, Cosmin, huge congratulations to you. Thank you very much. It's been amazing to, to meet the angels today and uh, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so excited. So what are the next steps for you? To meet Paul and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a conversation and uh, we'll see from there um, to put this to work, the project. I mean, I don't think I can go too far wrong with that. I'm you know, buying the bricks and mortar value of the property. We're going to add value to it. I'm going to get my money back, or well, at least most of it back, probably in about six to 12 months. I don't think, yeah, I think that's quite a good deal. Famous it's last relatively word. easy, straightforward yeah, as well. Yeah, just, yeah, I like those ones. Well, if you get all your money out, then, you know, you're in for 50% of the rent roll. Exactly, then we turn them over, we'll do more. I like helping him get started as well. He's a nice guy, mm. yeah. The, the best properties are the ones that are near schools, universities and hospitals. You know, this is an urban area. Um, you're absolutely right, it's bricks and, mor bricks and mortar, exist existing structure. The risk is, is, is fairly low. He's hungry. He wants to do business. He wants to make make a mark. He wants to go on a journey. Um, and actually, I think with you involved and with me involved, I think he stands a very good chance of, uh, of being successful. I think so. But we all know uh, how much John loves bedsits. So let's we'll see what he's got to say. I didn't need to be in the studio for this deal because everyone knows I'm bored of HMOs. I don't like them. Haley loves them. It's the first time Paul Mahoney's ever talked about an HMO and he's ended up funding the deal. I hope he knows what he's doing because Hayley wasn't so keen and she's my HMO queen. Hi Claire, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, tell us where you've come from today. We've come from Wolverhampton in the West Midlands. Brilliant. And tell us then a little bit about the deal that you've brought for our angels. Well, we found a two bedroom terrace property in Derby, just um, under a mile outside of the city centre. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping to convert it into a six bedroom HMO. Lovely. And how much investment do you need then for the project? We need £75,000 today, which will pay for the purchase of the property and for the first instalment to the builders. And what is the potential profit for the angels? So this is an, an all money out deal. So we, we look, we're looking to refinance and get all of our investment out. Um, and we're offering the angels 6% interest on their investment. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. We'll send you in shortly and I will have a little chat to you when you get out. Thank you very much. So we have Claire uh, coming up now. She has got an, a house in multiple occupation up in Derby. Um, she's looking for 75,000 pounds for six percent perhaps it's a loan deal i think but let's see hi i'm claire goodall um, i currently run a gp federation in worcestershire but prior to that i worked for hboss for 14 years um, starting a mortgage administration for existing mortgages moving into intermediary mortgage sales and then finally i worked for collies valuation surveying services my husband rob is my business partner um, he's a trained architect but in 2015 he went on to work for house building companies. So he now does their design management. So he's the technical part of our partnership. He understands planning and building costs. The deal that I'm bringing you to, to you today is um, a two bedroom terrace property, which is located just under a mile outside Derby city centre. And we're looking to convert it into a six bedroom HMO for seven people. So it will have four double ensuite bedrooms and two studio apartments. 
We've purchased the property already and, and that purchase price was 160,500. Um, we've had a quote from um, builders, which is in your pack. Um, they are HMO specialist builders and they've quoted us 140,000 for the build. We've got finance in place, development finance in place of 274,500 and 154,000 of that is for the building. So that includes a 10% contingency. So the GDV is 440,000, which is 9.5 times the gross rental income of 46,200. Um, so today I'm here asking for 75,000 pounds, which is the purchase cost of the property and the initial builder's drawdown of 20,000. Um, for that, we will offer you 6% interest. However, as we're new to property development, we thought we'd like to bring you a really low risk deal because we're looking actually for a long-term relationship with an investor. We appreciate that um, finance is our kind of key enabler for growth and therefore we want to build a trusting relationship with somebody that will invest in us in the future and help us to grow and learn as well. ROI of 100% looks good. Yeah. The return of six doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you say low risk, but effectively you're asking for the equity in the deal. Yeah. Um, which means if this goes wrong, it's our money at risk, not yours. Yeah. Um, and therefore the return needs to be much better. Paul's absolutely right. You know, to offer a 6% return at the early stages of your career where you're not experienced and you're expecting the investor to put in the experience as well as the money, yeah. I think you need to be offering far more. So I think you need to be looking at sort of 10% plus, probably more like 15 to 20% return okay. um, on a loan basis for your first few deals. Once you build up your track record, you can then start to drive that interest rate down. I think you're asking a lot with you being a newbie um, and you're asking that from experienced people who bring experience as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a, it, it, you know, I'm definitely not gonna be interested in, on this deal if that's all that's on offer. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna say it's not one for me today, I'm afraid. Um, okay. But I like you, I think it's great that you're on a journey. It's great to see you getting yourself educated first so you don't make mistakes, um, you know, getting the right network around you. Um, you've got a couple of deals already, brilliant. Yeah. Keep going, keep learning, keep getting stuck in and well done for coming today. Um, being so new in your journey, I think it's a, a okay, great yeah, testament. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've just got the point. Good advice though, thank you. Okay, there's some issues with the deal structure. Hayley, uh, do you have any, um, I mean, you, you're familiar with the area? Yeah, so just, uh, so six bed HMO, seven person. Um, so you're gonna need planning permission for this. It's permitted development. Well, it's, it goes off the number of people that occupy, not the number of rooms. Right, okay. Yeah, so if you put in six people in, great. You can go from C3 to C4, no yeah. issues at all under PD. So you would need planning permission for this deal. In terms of the area, I know that some parts of Derby do have Article 4. Have you checked that out? Yes, we have checked. We've actually used a sourcing agent to find the property for us. Okay. Development finance is an area that I'm fairly familiar with. Yeah. Um, just talk me through the background to the acquisition okay how that was structured um, what debt is on there at the moment um, and you mentioned when you were doing the pitch that you had a facility of I think 274,500 yeah what does that look like now and how do those releases happen to you yeah so the um the amount that we'll draw down initially is 112,345 which is minus the um, fees for the bridging finance Okay. And then it's 154,000, which will be released for the development costs. And the quote we've had is 140. Okay. okay. And that's a 12 month plan. It's a 12 month plan. 1% okay. interest, yeah. And then the end value of 440, yeah. that's a commercial valuation yeah. rather than a bricks and mortar yeah. valuation. Okay. Has the lender that you're using, have they had a valuation yet of the property? That's been instructed, but it hasn't happened yet. The majority of lenders that I know in this space, the bridging lenders and development lenders, will only ever look at a bricks and mortar end value of the property rather than the commercial investment value of the property on completion. This is not something that I would be prepared to invest in, um, but look, I wish you all the best on your journey. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I think the way this is presented is a shame um, because although you own the property, the deal you've presented is, is that we're effectively buying it off you in a partnership. So the ownership of the property isn't adding any value. It's just the fact it's secured. And therefore, in a sort of JV type situation, you know, we'd have to be looking more at something along the lines of 50-50 at the very least to justify it. You know, okay. it's not a big deal. It's, you know, the returns are, if you put in 75 grand, you get about 75 grand back. And the second charge offering doesn't add that much value in my opinion, because 
If this goes pear-shaped, there won't be any equity left. Sadly, like my friend Scott's hairline, I'm going to have to run away from this one. But at least I'm <laughs> proud of my hairline and like run jam. <laughs> Well, I don't like to take a haircut on any uh, deal. Uh, One of the issues here is that um, whether you get a commercial valuation or not, it depends on whether you do this with planning permission or not. If it's not with planning permission, then it's going to be bricks and mortar. So if you are going to keep it uh, under the planning radar, then it's likely to be a bricks and mortar valuation. But if you want to do seven rooms, then you're going to have, sorry, seven people, then you have to do, and studios, then you have to do planning anyway. So that leads us to another issue is if you did it without planning, then the rental income will be a lot less than you're proposing in your scheme. So that's one issue. And I think that determines whether you're going to be able to refinance and pull out the money to pay the investor's capital back. So I, th I don't think this is, this is for me because I, th I don't think this is, a, this is an investable deal where we'd basically get a decent return. Okay, so in terms of the expected valuation on a commercial valuation, I've got lots of six beds and mm. they are, they have been valued commercially. Um, so I think it depends on the demand, the area um, and good solid comparables. Yeah. Um, so I don't necessarily think that's an issue. The issue here is the offer that you've offered us yeah. isn't a great investment for us, but this is actually a good investment for you to do. Mm -hmm. Raise the money, friends, family, at, that are happy to kind of accept that 6%. We could do so much better yeah. with the money that we'd be putting into you. So, and we'd be helping and mentoring along the way as well. So this particular deal is not for me. However, I think you should definitely explore other options, cheaper cash um, than what we're willing to offer because I'd want at least 15 to 30% if you can't offer that no. with this deal. Okay, so thank for that you. reason. Thanks yeah. for all your help and advice. It's been it's been great speaking to you all. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. Personally, I think she's got a lot to learn. She's got a lot to learn. Oh, she's she naive. Is. That's the point of yeah, this show, though, so we can educate people and back the people we think have got what it takes. But we need to see the re returns reflected where yeah. our value is is reflected and in I what we're being offered. That, but I do think that people to come, come into the room, they should have a level of understanding and knowledge to be able to pitch successfully. But she's come in yeah. asking for the mentorship, the partnership. She wants the education but and someone to hold her hand. Her fault mm -hmm. is that she's offered too low. I mean, yeah, it's a good, I mean, Scott's got a good point though. If yeah. she'd have watched previous seasons, she would have got an understanding of the expectations of what we want from a deal. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Claire, let me give you some advice. Don't come into the property elevator and say you're going to give a 6% yield. The angels can get 6% probably on their millions of cash they've got already. And they're not having to take a risk to get it. They may not be getting 6%, probably 4% at the moment. You know, you've got to come in and share the deal. The one thing the angels like though, which you did say, is that you already own it. You already bought it. You've already got the funding. So I can understand why you're being sort of a bit mean and a bit cautious, but actually that doesn't help you with the angels at all, as you saw. So how was your experience in the room? It was really good. Um, although I didn't get the money that I asked for today, um, I had some really good advice from, uh, from the angels. So that's been really helpful and that'll help me with my journey. Well, we hope you enjoyed our first episode of Property Elevator Series 6. Our new angels certainly got stuck in and we had some incredible deals done. We'll see you next time. <laughs>